Ladies and gentlemen, for years Intel dominated the CPU landscape, but recently the company have been caught on the back foot. I don't think anyone, Intel especially, suspected that AMD would be able to deliver on all the promises of their Zen architecture. Whether it's Epic on the server market, Threadripper on HEDT, and of course Ryzen on the regular desktop. Intel have definitely found it hard to compete on the sheer value proposition that AMD are bringing to the table. Worse, it's not like AMD's processors are noticeably slower in most applications. Actually, core for core, thread for thread, the average user just wouldn't be able to tell the difference. But let's just be totally honest. Intel are not going to rest on their laurels and are releasing numerous processors across both the high-end market and of course the mainstream market to be able to compete, at least it hopes, with AMD. My name's Paul and in this Regimented.com video we're going to be discussing a couple of these processors starting out with the 7920X, a pre-release sample benchmark that's popped up on the internet and then we're going to move over to perhaps the more interesting platform and that is Coffee Lake and we have some engineering samples that also have been spotted on the internet. So as a slight warning there may be a bit more background noise than normal in this video. I'll do my bestest to remove it. However it is incredibly hot here in the UK and with all of the computer equipment that I'm running I simply need a windows open a crack or there's a good possibility I would not survive the recording process. Anyway let's jump in. Now, I would like to thank Alex K, I won't reveal of course his last name fully, for the sending of this particular i9-7920X uh, entry into the userbenchmark.com database. And what it does of course is provide at least some inkling of the processor. I think most of you are aware of what Skylake X is and Basin Falls, so I don't want to give you the full rundown. This part, once again, the 7920X is 12 cores, 24 threads, which is quite a lot of computing power. And you can see on screen a comparison. Obviously, this is a pre release sample, probably engineering, probably also not indicative of final performance or anything like that. It's turboing, at least it's being registered here at just 3.05 gigahertz on average. Um, overall, performance is pretty impressive considering, you know, the clock speed that it's running at, but there's a very good chance we're going to see this speed improve. Um, for those who haven't been following Basin Falls, I'll very quickly tell you that early reviews, there are a couple that was leaked early or put up early, and those results are a little bit behind what you probably are going to be getting on retail, simply because new BIOSes are improving the performance of this particular platform, and that's kind of normal when, you know, reviewers get hardware early. In fact, very often when reviewers get sent motherboards, they're actually told in the press kit, hey, you might want to actually do a little bit of, well, you know, retesting on this later on um, and make sure that the results are very similar. And there's actually a motherboard that we received for Ryzen. It was an X370 board and we actually did some testing on that and we were actually just about to publish the results, but then a new BIOS came out, I did some retesting, and some of the performance numbers went up rather drastically. So that's very that's very standard, of course, with CPUs. Now we're gonna move on to, but enough about Skylake X, let's talk about Intel's Coffee Lake. So Coffee Lake is, of course, aimed at the mainstream audience. It's not a high-end um, desktop part or anything like that. Now there are a plethora of changes that Intel are promising with the introduction of Coffee Lake. It is the code name, Coffee Lake of course, for the second 14nm process refinement of both Skylake and Kaby Lake. There are a few differences, however. The first, and perhaps most noticeable, is it will bring six core CPUs to the mainstream on Intel's platforms. It will also usher in the age of the 300 series chipset, which may mean no backwards compatibility if let's say you've bought, oh I don't know, a Kaby Lake board. There's also going to be a few other bits and pieces, for example USB 3.1 Gen 2 support is going to be supported up to six supports, new thermal design, uh, improvements if your if the CPU does have integrated graphics, then it's going to offer HDMI 2.0, HDCP 2.2 native compatibility, and all other bits and bobs, as well as improved memory support. But the other big deal is supposedly 
major improvements to performance. Now, I say supposedly because ultimately, let's just be honest, these things can slip. But uh, this is according to Intel themselves, specifically Intel's Gregory Bryant. I'm going to read out a quote to you. Earlier this year, you probably heard, we committed to getting a 15% performance improvement as we went from 7th to 8th generation cores. But, you know our engineers, they weren't satisfied with that, they didn't want to stop there, they knew we could do better and they dug in, and now we're happy to report the 8th generation is going to deliver more than double that, that's right, we're looking at a 30% improvement uh, per generation over, improvement generation over generation, in other words, they're saying that these CPUs in theory will be up to 30% faster. But wait, there's more. Unfortunately, this is referring to low power chips, for example, like 15 watt ones. So we don't know if there's going to be any real difference for, let's say, desktop users, whether it's going to be really limited to a few percent here and there, because traditionally 10%, 15% is what Intel have really bought from one generation to another, and really Skylake to KB, as you all know, is not really IPC gains, it's simply because of clock speed. So we have a Sysoft Sandra database entry for this particular processor, which is a six core 12 thread CPU. It's listing as 3.1 gigahertz for the base and 4.2 for turbo. That might not sound amazing, but do remember that this is, this is A, an engineering sample, and B, well, it's a hexacore CPU. Either way, you're looking at 6 times 256 kilobytes level 2, in other words, 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache per core, 12 megabytes level 3 total, which is actually pretty damn impressive, to be honest. Um, you can see the performance right there, for example, it's getting in dry stone integers, 68.4 gips, um, blah, 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 blah. Honestly, most of this stuff is not really indicative of real world performance. Obviously, if you're benching against another CPU, it, it provides some at least comparison points. I'd not be surprised, quite honestly, if we see the final clock speeds for this silicon to be a couple of hundred megahertz higher, maybe 300, 400 at the absolute max, but I'm guessing a couple of hundred megahertz is more likely, so maybe 4.4 for the boost. If we're lucky, maybe a little bit more. Um, you'll notice the integrated memory controller, IMC, is running at a rather hefty clock as well, which is very good indicator that Intel have improved memory performance. I must say that in terms of I.O., Cannon Lake is looking to be rather beastly and definitely is a step up from KB or Sky. Uh, from what we understand, you've got PCIe uh, 3.0 times 4, um, multiple PCIe 3.0 uh, lanes offer two M2 slots, a ludicrous amount of USB 3, USB 3.1, and it is scheduled to be released basically this year, over the next couple of months, maybe three, four months. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we just do not have an exact release date at the moment. But I'm going to go with Q3, early Q4 at the very latest, but obviously we're just going to have to wait and see. I'm very much looking forward to it and seeing how it compares against Ryzen. Ultimately, it's really down to Intel at this point uh, to kind of counter AMD because Intel have really taken a kicking at the moment uh, in terms of the price performance war. And I think most people would agree that, sure, Ryzen doesn't beat Intel in every single benchmark clearly. You know, that no one really expected it to do that. No one expected it to just ruffle stomp. But it does beat them on enough fronts for, so, for enough usage scenarios at a decent enough price where it's making a lot of users jump ship. With all of that said, I'm going to run off and take care of yourselves. Sorry once again for the additional noise in this video. As I said, I just need the windows open because I'm going to die otherwise. It is that hot. Even despite the fact I'm recording at half seven in the evening. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.